remember the night before the cardiology appointment. She was eight days old. I remember coming in the gym and then I heard that someone had collapsed. The nurse came in and ran the EKG and I remember her saying, this seems a little high. I saw he's a young man. I knew it was an emergency. The doctor walks in and he listened and looked and that was when we knew something, hmm. something was wrong. He wasn't breathing and I felt for a pulse and he had no pulse and started CPR. Her pediatrician had heard a heart murmur. Unknowingly, I asked the cardiologist, what about the heart murmur? And he looked at me and he says, at 250 beats a minute, only God could hear a heart murmur. It's still like a slow motion thing that people say when things like that happen. Time kind of stands still. Elizabeth was diagnosed at nine days old with PJRT, which stands for Persistent Junctional Reciprocating Tachycardia. Her heart races due to an extra tissue that she was born with, and it just wouldn't stop without proper medication. Dr. Snyder had said that it would take some time to find the proper cocktail of medications to get her heart where it needed to be at a regular pace. I can still hear the alarm on her uh, monitor in the NICU. Every time she got in tachycardia, the alarm would go off. And to this day, I can still hear that the same alarm, because for 12 days, it went off constantly. 911, what is location of your emergency? Uh, Planet Fitness in the Metter Mall. There is a man that's unconscious. Okay. We're trying to give him CPR, and we need, it. We need someone here quick. There was a gentleman who came around and introduced himself and told me he was a paramedic and asked me how he could help. I applied the AD while Kathy was uh, doing uh, chest compressions. Uh, sure enough, it, it shock advised and pushed the shock button. It all happened pretty quickly, probably within a minute or two after me starting. Days turned into weeks and weeks turned into months. It was three medications, three separate times a day. Our longest break when we first brought her home was four hours. This is your daughter and you're gonna do what you have to do. There were moments of just terror and I remember trying to beg and plead with God to help me out. His phone had kind of fallen out of his pocket and I saw the phone with his two little daughters and I was like, this guy has to make it. Two beautiful kids and you're young, so you've got a good life ahead of you and you need to be here. We finally got to a point where she was ready for her surgery. The day of the surgery, we got her upstairs into pre-op. They got her up on the table. How much time went by, I, I don't, that was a blur to me. It really is like that. I, every, everything else is just a blur around him. The turning point would have been when the squad showed up and they shocked him. His vital signs came back and that's when you, he came around. We got off the elevator. Dr. Snyder was standing there and he said, it, it's, it's over. Um, we always knew it was gonna be over. I never dreamed that she would be on medication her whole life. I always, I always knew in my heart that he was going to do exactly what he said he was gonna do. Um, I'm a religious person and before this event even happened, one of the things I would pray for was to live long enough to where my kids knew how much I loved them. So God's answered my prayers. And I was at, in my office one day and I got a call. And it was Nick's wife. We both sat there and just wept for a while. And he started talking about the, you know, his kids and, and you know how thankful she was that where he was that day instead of being at home. It was probably, in hindsight, probably the best thing that could have happened to him. Because if he was at home by himself with the kids, uh, he may not be here today to, you know, to enjoy them. If her heart rate was normal in that follow-up, 
would we have caught it? It was that moment that just, you know, by the grace of God, we were there and they caught it. You know, especially things in medicine, uh, you know, timing really is everything. That's all I think about is time. Me and my wife like to talk about our kids and what we have to look forward to when they're older, that every day is a memory. A year has passed and I am ready for another year and two and three and four and five. As the saying goes, the days are long, the years are short. We've gotten a dose of that being that she's almost five and a half, but we've been given the gift of time. It could have been different. I used to have a bum sticker. Dr. Chris breaks my heart. What would her prognosis have been if this were the 1960s, mm -hmm. the 1970s, mm -hmm. even 10 years ago? Without that research, without the doctors learning something new every single day, a new procedure, and through research, that's the only way I think those discoveries are made. The time is now. Time is why.